Good morning, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Honourable Dr. Musale Mudavadi, the Principal Secretary in charge of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Kori Singwe, my friend, my Deputy Gabriel Mduma, and all protocols observed, including Ambassador Lucy Kiruthu. I'm delighted to stand before you here today because this subject is very uh, close to my heart um, because of the fact that uh, my office is more often than not called upon, <clears throat> especially by the international media, to respond to questions that appertain to our positions on various matters. And they may range from our actions like uh, what is Kenya doing with the, the Kenyan, uh, about the citizens in Lebanon who need to be uh, to be evacuated. What is the situation there? It could as well be just a local issue. Uh, for example, uh, the other day somebody was asking me the finishing of projects uh, for stadium by Deutsche Welle. And like very, 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 very astounding uh, to say this, uh, Dr. Coril. Because we've, we've had conversations with you on the same prime CS, uh, even sometimes back when we were dealing with the issue of the Congo uh, and the elections there, and many other issues that arise from day to day uh, appertaining to the Kenyan position. Now, truth be told, is that Kenya has done very well, really, uh, in matters of international diplomacy in recent times under His Excellency President William Ruto. The profile is very high, and the Prime CS has been in the forefront in uh, you know, putting the position very well. And I, I think more often than not, Kenya has been called upon to provide leadership um, uh, in many, many instances. I remember when we had the 60th anniversary of the African Development Bank, the president put it very clearly that uh, he spends about 60% of his time uh, dealing with uh, African matters and 40% on Kenya because if he doesn't uh, sort out Africa, he will then not be able to sort out Kenya. And you know very well he is a, the champion for reforms at the AU. Um, but with that as it may, I think um, my take as a government spokesman is that I would want to urge, and we'll have this conversation because I'm sure we'll have that panel, I would want to urge members of the the state, who for me and my office, we consider you as, a, as really very close to us. Why? Because in the basic way of communication, you have the messenger, you have the message, and you have the channel. You have the channel. We have the message. We could be the messengers uh, more often than not. But if we do not get the channel right, then it means the message may not uh, you know, gotten very well because in between there's a lot of noise. It's as basic as that. And more often than not, I feel uh, when it comes to um, international matters, it really calls upon that sense of patriotism, Uzalendo, so that we all rally together and position the country in such a manner that it benefits uh, from that internal sense of cohesion and voice uh, within the community and community of nations. I think that that, that is something that uh, sometimes uh, we need to just do it out of basic uh, sense of nationhood and, and patriotism. And so I think we'll, we'll be hearing from that. Um, we, we have had the question uh, about which side do we face, for example, in terms of um, the West, the East, um, and the President has pronounced himself on that, and I'm sure the Prime CS will be you know, speaking more to it because he's a, a, the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Foreign Affairs. Uh, but I think it, it is basic um, expectation that any nation looks out for its interests uh, that then would ensure that we procure the best of benefits uh, to, uh, to, to, to its citizenry. So I think that is it um, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, I, I really uh, uh, want to urge us to uh, look at the benefits that uh, come to us as a country, be it matters to do, for example, 
uh, with, the, with, the, with the export of our labor so that we have more income coming to our country. I think it's almost like number one income earner for foreign exchange, be it to do with how we can promote our sports, you know, uh, you know, because of the way we are known as good Maradonas, you know, that kind of thing. And whatever other imagined, you know, ways in which Kenya's you know, flag can, be, can, can, can fly high. I would want to imagine uh, going forward that even when you look at the substance of the source document that is a foreign policy, the most important ingredient about it is to espouse it in such a manner that it is automatic. Like we make it, uh, we encapsulate it uh, in the best way. And I think it's about economic diplomacy. You know, it's about ensuring that uh, we, we get uh, uh, you know, the best out of the markets out there and also providing that African voice that many a times is, is seen to be fragmented. And, and, and I'm really championing for that. But we cannot proceed as a country uh, having such kind of uh, you know, standing if then there is backroom noise you know, from, from within. Uh, you know, it's good to ask questions, uh, but sometimes it's also good to just be you know, diligent enough uh, to do it. Finally, I think sometimes I find it difficult uh, as a Ghana spokesman when I have... Uh, given the, what to my best interest, the best information that is required of any subject. But when I read the story, I actually wonder why in the first place I gave those comments. Because they are only there to validate a certain angle already predetermined uh, to cast you know, uh, you know, uh, the country in a certain way. And, and then that, that is a breach of trust. So, so this may apply a lot more to the international uh, media rather than the local. Uh, in, in such matters. I've had instances where, you know, I don't want to mention a certain media house, you know, asking me questions and that I very well, genuinely respond to, but then when you read the story, you wonder really uh, whether it was even proper for that time. And of course, sometimes, as a, at the same time, uh, there's some information that uh, you, may, you just don't want to, to, to give out to the, to, the, to the public because it's either confidential, it's a secret, maybe somebody else should speak about it, uh, uh, as is often the case. Maybe nothing much has come out of it, like when you are dealing with the Haiti issue because it was a security issue. And, and then that, that patience, and, and sometimes when you do not come forward very strongly, uh, it may be misconstrued as if you're hiding something. So because government processes and, and, and information is not personal opinion, it's not just what I think on top of my head, like the way I would speak uh, before as a politician. So I think it's, it's a whole kind of understanding and I believe uh, this uh, gesture of having this media breakfast uh, led by our prime seers is just you know, a beginning one engagement so that we get to understand how things work and so that then we are able to position our country to be the best that there is in this uh, 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 region and the world. I thank you.